Welcome to Locked On Warriors. On today's show, I open up the mailbag to answer questions about what the Warriors' closing lineup should be and if Steph Curry is the most skilled player, pound for pound, in NBA history. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, it is a Thursday edition of Locked On Warriors, your daily podcast covering all things Warriors, Monday through Friday. I'm Wes Goldberg. However you may be listening, YouTube, Odyssey, or on your favorite podcast app, thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are opening up the mailbag today. This is your opportunity to dictate the terms of the show. You answer questions, and I answer them. Uh, And let's get to this first one from Michael, who writes in, What should the Warriors' closing lineup be? Now, this has been a question, I think, all season, not just for Warriors fans, but for the Warriors coaches. Steve Kerr has experimented quite a bit with a bunch of different lineups, has not settled on any one lineup in particular, but two of them have already stood out to me. Um, First, we got Steph, Damian Lee, Andrew Wiggins, Andre Iguodala, and Draymond Green. Steve Kerr has gone to that in... Three different fourth quarters for a total of eight minutes. And that five-man group is outscoring opponents by three points. Okay, so the, uh, plus three in those eight minutes. Small sample size. Everything's going to be a small sample size at this point. The other lineup that stood out to me uh, was the best one that they've used in the fourth quarter. Steph Curry, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, Otto Porter, and Draymond Green. That group has played four minutes in fourth quarters. Uh, and they are plus seven. And all four of those minutes came in one game. So, uh, like I said, small sample, not really much to get uh, here. But I think what we can take away when you look at the entire, you know, kind of swath of of fourth quarter lineups um, at the end of games, it's Steph Curry, Andrew Wiggins, and Draymond Green is those three that you could just sort of write in pen to close every game, right? And then you need one other ball handler and one other shooter, um, one of which needs to have some size and one of which probably needs to play in the backcourt with Steph. And so uh, when I say Curry, Wiggins, and Green, then you're going to, you know, complement those that that trio with a ball handler, whether it be Jordan Poole or Andre Iguodala, or a shooter, Damian Lee or Otto Porter. Um, And that's kind of where Steve Kerr has gone. Now, I don't really anticipate seeing... I think you could go Kevon Looney in some of these closing lineups depending on the matchup. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility, though they probably do want to be closing small more times than not. Uh, you could put Nemanja Bielitsa in there as a shooter. I think that could work if he's got the hot hand. Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't go with any of those guys. But I think for the most part, what we're going to end up seeing is Curry, Wiggins, and Green with either Jordan Poole or Andre Iguodala or Damian Lee or Otto Porter. Like, uh, two of those four, but probably... One of Poole and Iggy, one of Lee and Porter. You could go with Poole and Iggy, where you can have Steph, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, Andre Godala, Draymond Green. Just not a ton of great shooting there. I think you would rather have maybe a Damian Lee or an Otto Porter, but they can go in any of those directions, right? Um, and I think what you'll see this season from Steve is it's going to be a game-to-game basis. Those days of the Warriors knowing exactly what their closing lineup is going to be. Right, we knew all all the time it was going to be Steph, Clay, uh, Iguodala, Durant, Draymond Green, and if it wasn't Durant, it was Harrison Barnes before him. You knew it every single night they were going to close with that group. Those days are gone. I don't think uh, it could change if Jordan Poole, Otto Porter, Andre, Iguodala, one of these guys kind of stand up and make it. Hey, they say, look, I can, I could be a part of the closing lineup every night, but they all have their own faults. Like Jordan Poole has issues defensively, and if that shot isn't going in, I don't really know what you're getting out of him in the closing lineup. Damian Lee, inherent limitations defensively. Andre Godala getting older. Otto Porter, you know, not as versatile defensively as you'd like, not as much of a ball handler as maybe you would like, and obviously uh, has his own history of health issues, injury concerns. So there isn't, like, just these automatic guys that you could write in pen in closing lineup next to Steph, Wiggins, and Green. Those three are automatic guys, right? Wiggins and Green you have for defensive purposes, for ball handling purposes. With Wiggins, he can get to the basket. With Green, 
Uh, you know, Draymond's able to get Steph involved in the offense, and Steph obviously is going to be in there. I think when Clay comes back, probably not right away when he's still wor- working under some sort of minutes restriction and things like that. But once he's full flight, Clay Thompson, he'll be a part of that. And then you will need to fill in that other player. Uh, I didn't mention Juan Descano Anderson. Having a little bit of a hard time getting into the rotation every single night, but he's also one of those guys who maybe as the season goes on, uh, finds himself more and more in those closing lineups, especially if, you know, Otto Porter, Andre Godala, these older, creakier guys maybe deal with some injuries, things like that. He brings something defensively that Jordan Poole and Damian Lee can't bring. But the point being is that I don't think, even when Clay comes back and is ready to go 100%, uh, we'll know exactly what the closing five will be every night. The good thing about that is Steve Kerr has options, right? Based on matchups, he can go in a lot of different directions. He can go with a big like Bielitsa or, or Looney. He could go with more shooters. He can go with more ball handlers. He can go with more defense. It just depends on what he needs. It could be a mix and match situation for Steve. Um, all right, coming up, is Steph Curry the best basketball player, pound for pound, in the history of the NBA? This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership where you can just order them online? From Rock Auto, Rock Auto, a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for more than 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer and they have everything you can need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and then write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. We're back and better than ever with a new web interface for the start of the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all of the basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile uh, website to uh, sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use that promo code locked on. From basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC. Right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Let's get to this next question from Seferin, who writes in, I personally think that Steph is the most skilled basketball player pound for pound to ever play not the best but the most skilled everything from ball control and shooting to IQ and pace do you agree and if not who would you say is the most skilled so um I think first first reaction yeah I think Steph obviously most skilled player pound for pound of all time dude 6'3 190 pounds wet um best three-point shooter ever changed the game forever yeah I think at first blush, you say, of course, Steph Curry, pound for pound, most skilled player of all time. I don't want to get into best. And I like that Seferin didn't want to also get into best here. Best is so subjective. I think skilled, now we're really talking about something right now. So we'll, let's let's stick to skilled, okay? But like I said, first impression, Steph, yes. But I, I, I went through some names. Pulled together some heights, some weight data, right? Did all that stuff. All right, so I think when you talk, when you talk about Skilled. When I hear that word skilled relative to NBA players, some of the first names that come to mind. Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, right? Well, both of them 6'9", 220, something like that. We're talking pound for pound here. Maybe there's somebody that for like Nylon Calculus or one of those websites like broke down like literally like skill, uh, like assists, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then like did some long division and algorithms and stuff like that and determined like what each point per pound was worth or what assist per pound, each field goal percentage per pound was worth. I'm not getting into that mess. I can't do it. I'm not going to pretend to do it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, I guess. Bird Magic 6'9", 220, 
really among the most skilled, two of the top 10 players of all time. Um, but they're much bigger than Steph. And I think a big part of their games was predicated on being big. I you I think another big guy you talk about as far as skill is Kevin Durant, right? That dude's seven feet tall. Durant a couple of years ago told Bill Simmons, yeah, he thinks that he can only he'd probably be about six nine and be able to do what he was able to do. You think Kevin Durant pulled that six nine figure out of his butt? No. He looked at guys like Bird and Magic, who were all timers at their positions at six foot nine. LeBron James listed six foot nine. Um, that seems to be the floor there. Um, and I think a part of their game was obviously, you know, it helped that they were like, it helped that magic Johnson was a six, nine point guard, right? It helped that Larry bird could fire three pointers over, over deep, uh, uh, defenses at six foot nine. It all helped. Um, certainly both of them are very skilled, but I'll give Steph an edge because he was six inches shorter and several pounds lighter than those guys, and a better three-point shooter than either of them. Um, not very close. The other, so I mentioned Durant also. The other name that comes up is Chris Paul. I mean, six foot, 180. I mean, as big as Steph is, Chris Paul is smaller. You know, as small as Steph is, Chris Paul is smaller. Um, but doesn't have the shooting. You know, 37, 38% career, three-point shooter. Obviously, the passing is there, but when it comes to skilled, like, he's not blowing me away with footwork the way that a guy like Steph is or something like that. You know, I think that's an underrated part of Steph's game. It's just that footwork, especially beyond the three-point arc, how he's just able to shimmy and get open, right? Um, that, to me, is just it, it is so much IQ from Chris Paul and just, like, intangible stuff. Skill is not intangible. Skill is very tangible. It's kind of the definition of it. Um, so I'm not going to put Chris Paul. John Stockton, got to include him, right? Um, 6'1", 170 pounds, passing IQ, 38% career three-point shooter, so it's fine. Um, not, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't give him the edge over Steph. Worth mentioning. Um, these are the other two guys, or, or the other three guys, I should say. You're waiting for me to mention Michael Jordan. Has to be talked about when, talk, when we talk about skill. 6'6", 198 pounds, according to basketball reference. The footwork, the handle, the IQ, if we're including IQ in skill, and Seifert included IQ in his question, so we're going to do it because it's his question in, in, in the mailbag. You determine the terms of engagement here. Um, I have a really hard time saying anybody's better than Michael Jordan in anything, okay? Steph Curry included. Uh, 6'6", 198. Steph listed 6'3", 190. I mean, it's 3 inches, 8 pounds. Call it 10 pounds. 3 inches, 10 pounds. Um, his footwork and his handle were unbelievable. Now, I don't know that he has a better handle than Steph. I would say his footwork in the mid-range was certainly better than Steph's, even though Steph has figured out ways to be extremely effective. I've written about it, talked about it. Um, in that mid-range area. So that's a contender. Kobe Bryant. I know we think, uh, like, let's get away from just three-point shooting as a definition of skill. Uh, Kobe, with that footwork in that mid-range, nobody's ever been better. The passing was super underrated with Kobe. Just because he didn't do it a lot doesn't mean he couldn't. His handle was awesome. The IQ off the charts. Kobe Bryant, six foot six, 212 pounds. He's getting 20 pounds on Steph, three inches on Steph. So maybe that gives Steph the edge, but we have to mention Kobe Bryant in, most skilled comp in the most skilled conversation. The other guy I want to bring up is Steve Nash. Six foot three, 195. Basically identical to Steph as far as height and weight. The passing, the shooting, just because Steve Nash was reluctant to shoot, he was very unselfish. He was a 42.8% three-point, career three-point shooter. Steph's 43.3%. Now granted, Steph, much higher volume, obviously the greatest three-point shooter of all time, not even close, obviously. But Steve Nash, could, he could shoot the three, okay? And he said post-retirement, his biggest regret is not shooting threes more. He feels like he could have been part of that wave of guys like Steph, Damian Lillard, James Harden, etc., cetera, who, who got the three-point shooting rolling. Obviously, the IQ with Steve Nash uh, speaks for itself. I'd put Steve Nash right there in that conversation. So is Steph the most skilled basketball player pound for pound? I think that pound for pound thing is, I think, look, when you just have that conversation, most skilled basketball players ever, Steph is in that conversation. Forget height, weight, and all those, all those measurements. Forget it. Like, he's in that conversation. But when then you include pound for pound, it's hard to say that he isn't, given how much better of a three-point shooter he is than literally everybody we've ever seen. It's really hard. Plus, he's got the passing, the IQ, the footwork, the handle, all that. He's got all of it. Um, but I'd have to include Kobe, Michael Jordan, Steve Nash 
Have to include all of them in that conversation too. Have to. How couldn't you? Coming up, I promise I didn't mean to restart the finals MVP argument with Steph. Didn't mean to do it. We'll address that next after the break. This is Locked On Warriors. Today's episode is brought to you by Postmates. Hey, do you smell that? It's a burrito, my favorite. The steak, the cheese, the beans, the salsa, all of that. The best part, that it showed up at my door because I ordered it with Postmates. With Postmates, I get all of my favorite foods from the local restaurants in my neighborhood delivered to my house. Don't have to leave the house, and even better, not I don't have to get in the car or find a parking spot or any of that. They come direct to me, and Postmates isn't all just burritos and sushi. I can order things like toothpaste and phone chargers on demand, too. That's because places like Walgreens and 7-Eleven are also on Postmates. My favorite part, when the app lets me know that my food or items have been delivered. Everything is right outside my door. It's so cool. Never gets old. I can track my order uh, from the minute it's getting prepared to the minute it shows up. Just download Postmates on iOS or Android. Find your favorite foods or that one thing you forgot and get uh, to get from the store and get it delivered on demand. And for a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners a little something. New customers will get 50% off on your first five orders of $50 or more when you use that code LOCKEDONNBA. That's code LOCKEDONNBA. You're going to get 50% off on your first five five orders of $50 or more. Max savings of $100 per order. Just download the Postmates app or sign up online. It's super easy. Offer is subject to change and taxes and fees apply. Offer valid for 30 days after you add the promo code to your account. Today's show is also brought to you by Sweatblock. For a few weeks now, we've been talking about Sweatblock, these wipes that stop sweat for seven days, and it seems people have been listening. We have friends of Locked On who've tried Sweatblock and love it. Take it from this high school teacher. Uh... When he'd pit out by fourth period, he'd hear the snickers and the whispers from his students. Man, high school uh, students could be so mean. He started bringing a second shirt to change in between classes. That's how mean they would be. Then he heard about Sweatblock on our program, and he tried it, and he's now hooked. No more snickers, no more second shirt. Uh, and these high school students can find something else to make fun of. Uh, straight out of Hollywood, we have a producer who is working on the set of a Marvel movie. You may have heard of it. She was working 18-hour days for weeks in the Atlanta heat. Uh, and then she heard about Sweatblock. Start trying it and loves it. No more sweaty production days. She even reports that one of the A-list actors started using it. Another success story here about an avid soccer player. He heard us talking about sweat block and thought it was too good to be true. But he was always the wettest guy after practice and games, like soaking wet. So he thought he'd give sweat block a shot. He tried it on his pits. The next practice, his pits were dry. Well, everything else was wet. Uh... That's what the copy here says. Not really sure what that means. He says he didn't have to reapply for nine days. Now he's a true believer. So there you go. Locked on listeners loving sweat block. Stop excessive sweating for up to seven days per use. Doctor created, doctor recommended, dry shirt guarantee, not just for armpits, chest, back, feet, hands. Use it anywhere. Uh, and if you are someone you care about is dealing with excessive sweat, you have to check out Sweatblock. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com and use that promo code locked on or find it in Amazon and CVS. All right, continuing along with our mailbag, Steve writes in, Steph hasn't played well, but still was the Western Conference Player of the Week. The game last night is a perfect example of what the league is still trying to do. They are sending double and triple teams at him, and he's fine with giving the ball to his teammates who are picking up the slack. It started... It's starting to look like a layup drill for the rest of the team. Back off the ledge, Wes. Everything is fine. Um, Steve, obviously, um, responding to my comment that on yesterday's show, stuff hasn't played well. I stand by it. Look, I know he won Western Conference Player of the Week. It's fine. I don't really care about Player of the Week awards. I think they're really dumb. When I was working for the Mercury News, every time Steph won one, I had to write up a little like 250-word thing about it. And I hated it because it's a stupid award. I don't, I don't care about them. I don't think they should be counted on a resume. It's not like, hey, how many uh, Player of the Week awards did Michael Jordan get? We're not using that in the great MJ versus LeBron debate. Like, I don't care about Player of the Week. I don't. But, to Steve's point, how could somebody who hasn't played well win this stupid award? Okay, fair enough. I stand by it. I think that award is really lazily voted for. I don't think, I think people look at points per game, and that's it. And Steph is tied for third in points per game. But I'll say it again. Take out the 45-point game against the Clippers. He's shooting 34.4% overall, 31.2% from three-point range, and averaging 23.7 points per game. Fine for somebody, not fine for Steph. This is not a knock on Steph. It's not a knock on Steph. It's not a knock on his teammates. It's not 
I'm not saying that Steph is washed. I'm not saying that he's done. I think Steph is going to finish in the top four or five in the MVP conversation by the time the year is over. I'm just telling you he hasn't played all that well. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. Those are numbers are right there for you to see it. I don't care about the Player of the Week award. The numbers show that he hasn't been up to Steph's standards. He hasn't been a bum. Just hasn't been up to his own standards. If anything, it's a compliment to him. And it's a compliment to his teammates that the Warriors still have not lost a game. I'm not saying the sky is falling. I don't need to back off any ledge because I'm not even close to it. Just saying he hasn't played well. And I'm just wondering when I'm just wondering when he's gonna kind of snap back and start playing like the stuff we expect to see every single night. It's not a comment on anything other than the facts, what's in front of us. Because when Steph starts playing like we're used to seeing him play, then I'm going to be really interested to see what the Warriors look like. Because I'm not, I'm, I'm not fully there yet, right, with, you know, like what Connor was saying on the show a couple days ago, that it's championship or bust for the Warriors. I'm not all the way there yet. Small sample. I'm not, I just, I, I, I tend to be really conservative about these things. And the Warriors haven't been to the playoffs in two years, Okay. I'm not pumping the brakes. I'm just waiting, okay? I'm just I'm observing. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. Julius writes in, Finals MVP is not a hole in his resume at all. He got snubbed at least twice for it. It's not on him. Uh, this in response to that same podcast that I did with Bram and Connor. And if, by the way, you haven't checked it out, we predict what the Warriors look like in 2025. Talk about a whole slew of topics. This is my final week hosting Locked on Warriors. If you're going to listen to any individual show, that's the one you want to listen to. I highly recommend you listen to it if you haven't checked it out already. Um, apparently, I've said a couple things that people didn't like. What's new? Um, it is a hole in his resume. It's not his fault, okay? It's not his fault. He should have won finals MVP. The year Andre Iguodala won it, Steph should have won it. Period, point blank, end of story. That was when the media narrative got way out of hand about Andre Iguodala guarding LeBron James. Um... It was too much. Did Andre Iguodala do a great job? Yes. But the Warriors don't win the finals if they don't have Steph. Maybe they figure out if they don't have Iguodala. I, I, mean, I don't even mean, you know what, I take that back. I don't mean to take anything off of Iguodala's plate. I'm just saying. If you're going to give finals MVP to somebody, Steph should have won it. So, it should be on his resume. But it doesn't mean it is. It's not there. And it's missing. And it's not fair. But when we have conversation about the greatest 10, 20, 30 players of all time, and you want to start debating where Steph is in that mix, and you start splitting hairs with the greatest of the greats, maybe finals MVP comes into play. When you start comparing resumes, seven all-stars, three champions, all that stuff, and maybe one has a finals MVP and the other doesn't, that matters. I'm just saying it's a hole in his resume. And I think Steph, he could probably say it. He doesn't care about winning a finals MVP, but you don't think he wants that little trophy? You don't think he wants the little trophy next to the big trophy somewhere in his house? I think the Warriors, the Warriors keep the big trophy, but you know what I mean. You don't think he wants that on his shelf somewhere? Of course he does. He's super competitive. Why wouldn't he want that? That's how he got as good as he is. Is He, he is that competitive. There's an expectation that he will get it. Bram and Connor both predicted that the Warriors will win another championship between now and 2025. I think they've got a chance. I think as long as they put themselves in that conversation, as long as they are a contender status in that top four or five in the West, yeah, of course you have a chance. If they do, Steph will win finals MVP if they win the finals. Um, he will win it. That's just how sports writers work. Like, if... The Warriors win the championship. I don't care how Steph played. Every sports writer will feel compelled to make sure Steph adds that to his resume. Because everybody knows he deserves it at some point in his career. So he will. Uh, but they have to get there first, right? They actually have to get to the finals and then, more importantly, win the finals. Um, if that's ever going to happen. That'll do it for today. Remember to subscribe to new episodes of Locked on Warriors on YouTube or wherever you listen to the podcast. Comment and leave a five-star rating and reach me on Twitter at WC Goldberg. Thank you for making Locked on Warriors your first listen every day. Now make your second listen. Locked on Fantasy Basketball. Josh Lloyd hosts the number one daily fantasy basketball show on the planet. It is free. It's available on all platforms.